have with us this day evening, Mr. Rich Lee, things turn the gospel. And we're very honored he's with us this evening time here on the East Coast Eastern Standard Time. So let's welcome Mr. Richard to the Ones Network. Welcome to Good evening, Mr. Greg and Mrs. Rebecca and those that are listening. It's good to be back around the, the Word of God, the Gospel, which is able to make us wise unto salvation. And let us open up with a prayer and seek God's blessing. Gracious Heavenly Father, Thou who dwellest above the heavens of the heavens, O Lord our God, has blessed us in all the heavenly places in Thy name, the name that Thou bestowed upon Thy beloved Son, Jesus, our faithful high priest and mediator, who in or through we have been blessed in all the heavenly places. So we pray now as we delve into Thy word of truth, which is able to make us wise unto salvation, and even a gospel that thou didst send thy son to preach where we can attain unto salvation. And there's no other name given unto heaven whereby we can attain to the great precious promise of the gospel that thou didst preach to Abraham over 5,000 years ago, that we can attain to the promises of our everlasting kingdom that will never be destroyed or given to other people, but given to the saints. And those who have been baptized into that name, Emmanuel, even Jesus, that he received at his birth. We thank thee now for being with us, and we know that thou will be with us because we ask these things in the way appointed through Jesus Christ, our coming King and our righteousness, a very present help in the time of trouble and need, even Jesus, amen. Okay. <clears throat> The God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, who created everything in the beginning, very good from the beginning, has said, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. And those words were, speaking, were spoken in the context of a people that had been taken out of Egypt and taken to the promised land. The land that had been promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and many others. And they uh, died in the, in the wilderness. God destroyed them in the wilderness because of un they didn't believe him. And they said, I wish we had a dad uh, uh, in, the, in, in, in the wilderness. Uh, let us go back to Egypt. And uh, got to be careful what we <laughs> say say we want we would want and God will give us what we want to him and especially if we're, if it's if it's due and going against what he has presented in the way that we should walk they didn't believe and they died perish in the wilderness Hebrews chapter 3 tells us that Isaiah 42 9 tells us Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things are now declared before they spring forth that tell you of them. God is telling all those who would hear, those who are in a covenant relationship with him, the things that, uh, that were before in the past that I spoke about, uh, they came to pass. And new things I now declare before they spring forth, I tell you about them. Before they even come forth, I'm telling you about some new things that are going to come before they even come. He says concerning his word, Isaiah 55, 10. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, 
that he may give seed to the soul and bread to the eater. Let's stop then. And we're witnesses of this verse, Isaiah 55, 10. The rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and it doesn't return, but it waters the earth and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the soul and bread to the eater. He sent it. It's not going to go back up. It's going to water the earth. Why? So that it may bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower. And out of that seed, what comes? And bread to the eater. And he likens it to his word. Isaiah 55 10 is likened to Isaiah 55 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So as the water comes down and the snow and waters the earth and maketh it and bring forth in it bud and give seed to the soil and bread to the either, so shall my word go out of my mouth. It's not going to return unto me void. It's going to accomplish that and which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And just in passing once again, I said it before. Can you see the Lord Jesus Christ <laughs> in Isaiah? Yeah. He's, Jesus was the word made flesh. The last verse on the screen. He was the word made flesh. Which went forth out of God's mouth. He by the power of God, the Lord Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. And that word is not going to return unto him void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper into the thing where to us in it. Jesus didn't return to his father. He went, the angels took him up in, in Acts chapter 1. And he went forth and he went to the father. He accomplished everything which his father sent him to do. Remember his father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And Jesus said, I always do those things that please him. And he prospered in everything that his father sent him to do. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Things that be not as if they were. God calls into existence the things that do not exist or the things that seem like they are not, but they are. Things that be not as if they were, he calls into existence. And that's what these verses are saying. This down here. Scripture tells us, Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it, or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Numbers 23, 19. It's impossible for God to lie. Why is it impossible for God to lie? Because he's a God of truth. It's that simple. And I'm repeating a lot of these verses because that those who have been called in the gospel message, the gospel of Christ, that God his Father sent him to preach, there's some that lose their faith and, and they waver. And they, some, we can lose sight of the fact and say, well, and, and listen to other people and listen to scientists. But I am sure and positive, if we remember Numbers 23, 19, my favorite verse in all the scripture, coupled with the gospel that was before preached to Abraham, if we remember that God is not a man that he should lie, 
neither the Son of Man that he should repent or that he should change. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Uh, the answer is yeah. If we believe that it's impossible for God to lie, because he's a God of truth. Talking about the days of Noah, Jesus said. Now, they were eating and drinking. I'm not going to labor these because we've heard it before. But it's, it's, uh, it's, I have to bring these verses out for my connections. So please forgive me if I repeat. As it was in the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking before the flood. And uh, they did not know until the flood came and swept them all away. So will it be the coming of the Son of Man? Because, uh, well, let me stop here. Here we are in 2023. Nothing new under the sun. And uh, as it was in the days of Noah, Jesus says they were eating and drinking. But you go back and read the Genesis account, it said there was it was evil in the imagination of man's heart was only evil continually, and violence filled the earth, and they had went away from the ways of God that the Genesis six tell us. To. And um, the Ecclesiastes eight eleven says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. What is that saying? God says that uh, those who do evil and everything, uh, he's, gonna be, he's gonna judge them. There's gonna be a sentence. And some feel that because and they know what they're doing is not the ways of God, it's evil. And they've been doing certain things, whatever. And it's, it's, it's against the ways of God and nothing has happened to them. And so uh, the preacher says, therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Nothing's happening to me. I'm getting pleasure out of what I'm doing, whatever it may be, and there uh, ain't nothing happened. And, it's, and um, man is saying, hmm, ain't nothing happened yet, and I haven't got caught. And the crutch of the whole matter, because the sentence against an evil work, those who are doing evil, nothing is said to them or nothing is happening to them, they're going to keep on doing it. Because uh, they haven't got caught yet. And in that same vein, you got those, uh, Apostle Peter says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. Uh, let me stop right there. These are scoffers. These scoffers are the saints. Some of them, these are the these are believers. Look at the next verse, 2 Peter 3, 4. And they're saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, with not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. During the time of Noah, God waited 120 years. 
and these scoffers uh, are the ones that uh, evidently uh, have not believed in the promises that God made. Because they say, where's the promise of his coming? It's a, and what they're saying, where's the Messiah? Well, when is, look at it, it's, look how long it's been. It, since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. It's talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's talking about uh, the uh, the 12 sons of Jacob, uh, whom Israel came through and became a great nation and as the, as the stars in heaven, as the sand upon the seashore, they, were, they exploded, came forth, because that's what God said would happen. The world don't know anything about where's the promise of his coming. The world don't know anything about the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and so forth. And there are those who don't want to know anything about God at all. So it's not talking about the world because the world don't know God. So uh, it's definitely he's talking about believers. And then look what he says. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. God is from everlasting to everlasting. He has no beginning and no ending. So uh, we may think it's a long time, or those who don't believe may think it's uh, a long time. God is not involved in time. Man is the one that's in prison, that's locked up, and death has got a hold on us, all of us. Death has got us locked up. We're in prison. And there's one who has the key, though, to unlock that prison gate. And he has done it. But God is saying, and the reason why oh, Christ hasn't come back yet, look what he says. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, what? not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's talking about where's the promise of his coming. They're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. God can send Jesus back any time he wants to, but his, his own timetable, he knows when it's time for the Lord to come back because he's still calling out of the nations of people for his name. Even now in 2023, he's calling the people for his name. We find out Paul writing to the ecclesias or to the churches, and there were those who were preaching another gospel. And Paul said, There is no another gospel. Galatians chapter 1, verse 7. If somebody was preaching another gospel. And Paul said, if anybody preaches any other uh, gospel, they would be cursed of God. And of course, the word of curse means, it's the Greek, Greek word for anathema, and it means to be cut off or ex-banned, excommunicated. Cut off from Christ, you're dead. Simple. There were those who departed from the faith. First Timothy 4 tells us, they departed from the faith, what is what what faith? What is faith? Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And also faith is the substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. There was something that was promised. It's a substance. It's talking about the kingdom. It's talking about the good news that was preached before to faithful Abraham. Oh, I have a question for you, Mr. Lee. Sure. Mr. Lee, I was just that word is Abraham not have favor with God because of his good works. He had favor with God because of his faith. Yes. And that's in Genesis 19. Excuse me, what I'm getting. I should have had my Bible over there. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's when the angels came to Abraham. And uh, just before the Lord sent his angels, he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, let me get that up. I think it's Genesis 19 or 8. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Genesis 18 about the about the angels coming to Abraham about Sodom and Gomorrah. I think it's, yeah. I think it's Genesis 18. Uh, yeah, my wife was telling me said <laughs> Genesis 18. She, went, she knows. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's what the Lord, uh, uh, where Abraham, of course, he knew Abraham, and we find this in uh, uh, Genesis 18, 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For, here's the verse, verse 19, Genesis 18. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring up on Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Yeah. And and Abraham we know was called the friend of God. God God called Abraham his friend. And not only Abraham is his friend, all those who have been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, which he received from his father, the saints. Oh uh, we're his friends too. Those who are in a covenant relationship with God and, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Because remember what Jesus said? I'm glad you're bringing some of these things up. <laughs> you, you're making me, I'm really uh, got to exercise my brain here and call these verses up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that's good. Uh, um, remember what Jesus says? The servant doesn't know what his master. That's right. He says, but... I call you no, not no more my servants, my but I friend. call you my friends because I have made all things known to you that I received from my father. And ye are my friends if you keep my commandments. And, and what we just read in Genesis 18, for I know that he will command his children. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? How, how that comes together. Hey, Mr. Lee, for God to call you a friend, I mean, what more person want? Uh, you kind of breaking up again. Uh, you, you mentioned for God to call you a friend, more person want. I'm sorry, Mr. Great Guy. Uh, for God, and now yeah, you said friend, but the rest of it is uh, bouncing off the walls or something that I can't understand. It's echoing. Yeah, no problem, Mr. Lee. Okay, Go I'm ahead. Sorry. No okay. problem. Okay. No, no, you can help me, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, and that were those, uh, okay, back, that were those who, who uh, were preaching another gospel, what Paul says, that's not another. There were those who departed from the faith, which is on the screen at the left. And then there were those who went back into the world because they loved the things of the world, Demas. Yes. Paul says, Demas has left me and departed and for the love of the things in the world, 2 Timothy 4.10. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, there's uh, um, those that cause the riches and the lust. Jesus says in 4.19, that uh, they received the word with eagerly and, and so forth. And, uh, and, and uh, um, but then when the problems come mm -hmm. of the work and the cares of the world and of the world, yeah. they, um, they, 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 they,
Oh, I thought you wanted me to tell you where. Uh, the things of the uh, world dis uh, distract them and they don't grow. And uh, even John, the epistles of John, the first epistles of John, I got John 2, but it should be 1 John 2, 15 to 16, where it says, love not the world or the things in the world. For the love of, the, if you love the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Yes. And though, uh, the lust of the flesh, lust of the, of the eyes and the pride of life is all in the world. And the lust, those who lust after those things are going to perish with the world. There's only one way into the kingdom of God, and that's the gospel of Christ. Let's see if we can put some light on that. The gospel of Christ is the good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what the gospel is. It's a good news. Acts 8 and 12. In fact, Acts 8 and 12, Acts 8 12, gives you the definition, the meaning of the gospel that was preached to Abraham. Talking about the good news about the kingdom of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. And those that believed that, they were baptized, both men and women. We have 2 Peter 1.10 saying, Wherefore, the brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly. Here it is into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter, the apostle Peter was saying, make your election sure and your, call, your calling and election sure. And he says, if you do these things and you go back and read Second Peter 1, he's talking about uh, the things that saints, uh, he's talking about the fruit of the spirit, patience, endurance. And you can go back and read Second Peter chapter 1. And that's what he's saying. Give diligence to make your call in election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. And you can go back and read 2 Peter 1 and find out what those things are. So that the entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Christ, Savior Christ Jesus. So find out what those things are in 2 Peter 1. And it, Peter says, you'll never fall. If you keep these things in you, you'll never fall away from Christ. Hey, Mr. Leah, are things fruits of the Spirit? Yes. The fruit of the Spirit? Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, Love, joy, patience, goodness, yeah. kindness, long-suffering, self-control. Yes. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And... uh and Jesus said, without the, the fruit of the Spirit, those things, I think he, in, in Matthew chapter 5, I think he's, was, uh, oh, the Sermon on the Mount? He's, uh, he's talking about, um, that's the Sermon on the Mount. He says, um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And then he goes on to say in verse 10, Matthew 5, Blessed are they which are persecuted, for righteousness sake. Yes, yes. And, and Mr. Lee, that's the Beatitudes, right? The Beatitudes? Yeah, that's it. Yep, that's it. The Beatitude. Mm -hmm. Yep. I got my um, recall person sitting behind me here. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, Lorna. But anyway. Welcome, Mrs. Lee. Hi, Greg. And I want to say uh, good evening to those out there, too. Uh, I'm not ignoring you. So if you send 
uh, a chat or something. I can't see it, but please, uh, I appreciate it and, 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 and thank you that you're, uh, that you're listening to these talks because it's all coming from the Bible. Uh, into the everlasting at the bottom left on the screen, making sure, make your election sure, into the everlasting kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's, let's talk about this uh, again. It's the kingdom of men and the kingdom of God. And uh, just, uh, in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, it says, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now, uh, the, the Bible interprets itself. Right. And bottom left. Make your election sure in your calling, Peter says, mm -hmm. so that your uh, interest shall be ministered unto you and you will abundantly enter into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And here we have, oh, what, about what, 3,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago? Ah. Sorry about that. Yeah. So, and here we have uh, these verses are in harmony. And God's going to set up a kingdom that shall never be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all of these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Uh, it's talking about these last days too that we're in now well we're right at, at the epoch uh most of the things that, that have been prophesied um has, to be, has, has to happen already uh, uh, behold a son is born a child is is uh, has been given and and uh, um that's all that happened already. Jesus was born over 2,000 years ago. Um, he gave his life. So he destroyed sin in the flesh. Yeah, I got it uh, coming up, uh, so I'm going to stop there. But the thing of it is, is that um, the only thing left for Jesus to do, uh, Jesus can come back any day now. Because he's performed, he's performed every. It said when he performed everything and pleased his father, he sat down on the right hand of the father in heaven. He's seated at the right hand of the father now, and um, he's a he's a faithful high priest and mediator. Um, priest the, under the law and everything. There was no chairs in that temple when they went in there to serve God. You can't sit down. <laughs> Priests don't sit down because there's too much work to do. But Jesus finished and fulfilled the law. And so therefore, he can sit down now at the right hand of the Father. And the Father said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus, the point I'm getting at, there's a time the Christ is going to come back. And of course, we don't know the day or the hour. He could come back at doing this program. But I'm sure that he hasn't come back yet because God is still calling out of the nations of people for his name in every generation. From the generation of, of, of Noah to now, in every generation, God is calling out of people for his name. The gospel message went out. It went out to faithful Abraham. And it says the gospel that was before preached unto Abraham. It doesn't say the gospel that was preached to Abraham. It's saying the gospel that was before 
God preached to Abraham. It already had been preached. What was it? He was talking about Messiah, the seed, the promised seed, Genesis 3.15. But uh, we'll get into that maybe another time. And Paul says on the screen, right hand side, Colossians chapter 1, 21. This was the Gentiles at one time. And he says, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable reproval in his sight. What's he talking about? He's talking about the Gentiles. They had no connection at all. They were not a part. Go back and read that Colossians chapter 1. You'll see nothing has been taken out of context. They had nothing to do with the promises of God. Because uh, wicked works. And you were sometimes alienated. In other words, you had no part with the children of Israel and enemies in your mind by wicked works. But yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, that's Christ, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable. This is when Christ comes back. He won't find you have nothing to blame you for, and he won't have to reprove you. Why? If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. That is, if you don't, if you're not moved away and but be grounded. Continue in the faith. What is faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Remember what God has told you. And as long as you stay in the faith, the things you've heard from God, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. The gospel is uh, what God sent his son Jesus to preach. Isaiah 61 1. And then uh, I think it's Mark 4 that uh, Jesus speaks about himself as the coming of Messiah. When he was in the temple, he said, uh, This prophecy has been, this scripture has been fulfilled in your ear. Isaiah was talking about the coming of Messiah. You're looking at him. And here it is the hope of the gospel. The gospel is the complete plan and purpose of God and his earth and mankind upon it. He has a purpose and a plan for his earth and man upon it. Let's see why things are they are in the world. We found out in Romans chapter 5, verse 12 tells us, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Colossians 15, 22, first, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22 tells us, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. How shall we all be made alive in Christ? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. And you we may have a better understanding because curses everyone that hangs on the cross. And now I'll bring this out a little later uh, as we go through. I'll bring this out. Bring.
blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Let's back up a little bit. <clears throat> back up. Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How? Being a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. So Christ has made a curse for us. And what happened? Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, that's a mankind which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Christ, when he hung on that cross, on that tree, and he didn't do anything worthy to hang on the tree. He was made a curse for us, for our sins. Point being, he blotted out the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us. What was against us? What does it mean, the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us? It's talking about the law of Moses. When Moses went up in the Ten Commandments and other commandments also, was written on the stones. He blotted out the, the, the ordinance of the uh, of, of the commandments of God that said, "Thou shalt not, thou shalt not." The law was a good, the law was good, but it was was against us. Why? Because the weakness of the flesh, the flesh couldn't weak could couldn't keep the law, but Christ did. He said, "I didn't come think now that I come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it." He said, and he did fulfill the law. He didn't sin. There's all other human beings, even now and, and, and onward, uh, is going to break God's law. They're going to sin some kind of way. By the time the average person comes to know God, they already didn't sin already. While we were yet sinners, <laughs> God sent his son. Why we were yet sinners. And the law was contrary to it, the bottom the verse on, on the screen, which was contrary to us. And he took it out of the way. What does it mean, kneeling it to the cross? The law said, thou shalt not, thou shalt not commit murder, adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, and the list goes on. He nailed those things to the tree because he never did any of them. He never sinned. Everything that breathes is going to die. What's the solution for this dying world? Excuse me. It should read. What is the solution for this dying world? Here's the solution. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Let's read Numbers. Hope you got your Bibles with you. Let's read Numbers chapter 21 concerning this serpent. Numbers chapter 21, <clears throat> verse 5. This is the people in the wilderness journey. They, mur <clears throat> they murmured. They, they, they wanted to stone Moses. And uh, every time you looked up, they were complaining about something. So let's, 
let's see what this account is. Numbers chapter 21, verses 5 through 7. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought up, up out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there is no bread, neither there is any water, and our soul loathes this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Last verse, verse 7. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Verse 8. on the screen. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it up on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, that was on that pole, he lived. Okay, I'll save the last verse, John 17, 3, for later on. Let's go back. And the Lord said to Moses, make thee a fiery serpent, set it up on a pole. It shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looked upon it, shall live. So this fiery serpent, that Moses made, put up on a pole, it says that everybody that looks up on it should, should live. Now, imagine this now. That's this pole. And God said, make a fiery serpent. Okay, this fiery serpent, what is it made out of? And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it up on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Brass, in, in, in the scripture, is symbolic of human nature, flesh. Keep that in mind now. Flesh. And so it, that brass was put up on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten, this is real. God sent live serpents, had bitten any man. When he beheld the serpent of brass, which was on the pole, he lived. So what is this saying? The brass represents flesh. Put up on the pole. Um, or we can even say it was put up on a tree or on the cross. Brass represents flesh. It was put up on the pole. Its flesh was put up on the pole, but it was a bra it was made of brass, symbolic of something. And when the, the people looked upon they had if they had been bitten, by an actual real serpent, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. The serpent in scripture, Genesis 3.15, which talks about the seed of the woman, the seed of the serpent, the, the seed of the woman is going to bruise. Here's the key now to, the, to what we're looking at now. Genesis 3.15 tells us the seed of the woman is going to bruise the serpent in the head. But the serpent is going to bruise the seed of the woman in the heel. Who's the seed of the woman? In Genesis 3, 15, that is pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ. Who's the seed of the serpent? The serpent was real. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast 
of the field that the Lord God had made. That's Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. He was a, a beast of the field, which is also symbolic also. And what God was saying is, the serpent spoke, hey, he could care less whether anybody ate of the tree or not or whatever. He was a more of an animal. He was a beast. That's the reason why when God came to the serpent, he didn't ask him, why did you do this? But he asked Adam and Eve, what have you done? But when he gets to the serpent, you go back and you read it. He said, because thou hast done this. Well, it makes sense. Animals, when a dog comes, you're having a cookout and he jumps up on the table and um, take your steak off the table. What are you going to do? You're going to ask him and say, hey, why would you do that? No, no, I'm just I'm not making a joke. No, dog don't know what you're talking about. You can say, why did you do that all you want? He ain't going to answer you. He might bark or something like that, but that's not telling you the reason why. Point I'm making is, is that the serpent is symbolic. He was real he was, and also he's symbolic of sin in the flesh. Those who think like Eve listened to the serpent and Adam listened to his wife. Adam was the one who wasn't Eve's fault. Eve was nowhere on the scene when God gave Adam the commandment not to eat of the tree of good and evil that was in the midst of the God. Eve was not present. She was not made yet from Adam's side. You go back and you read it. Adam was responsible because God told him, the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And uh, when the woman took up the, of the fruit and gave to him, he was standing right there by. Go back, go back and read it. He was right there. He should have said, no, no the Lord said we, we shouldn't do that. But he never said nothing. Didn't say not one word. Only th thing that, that Adam said in that whole scenario was when God said, have you eaten of the tree of, of good and evil that I commanded you not to eat of? That's the only time you'll hear Adam say anything. I don't recall him saying anything else. But uh, if you have, you know, you can put me straight on it. It has to be thus said the Lord from the scriptures. And uh, if I make a mistake and say something, call me out because we're here to rightly divide the word of truth. And uh, I've already went over some of my talks before and looked at them and I saw some mistakes that I made quoting, uh, well, the, I quoted the scriptures right, but I quoted the wrong where it was to be found at and uh, a couple of other things too. But anyway, so the serpent, all those who think like the serpent, and that's what this is about. So when Moses made the fiery serpent and put it on the pole, God is saying, you got to crucify the flesh. That's what he's talking about. And that's what Jesus did when he came on the scene. He, uh, that's the reason why Jesus said, Pick up your cross daily and follow me. And everybody that looked up on the cross, well, Jesus had to have been crucified, put on that cross, was a witness. They never sinned because he fulfilled the law. And that's the reason why the grave couldn't hold him. Why, why couldn't the grave hold him? Because the wages of sin is death, and Jesus did no sin. We have a few minutes, Mr. Lee, for us. Okay. Uh, on your own time, maybe you can read uh, Genesis, the whole chapter, and we can talk about it uh, the next time, uh, God willing, on the uh, podcast.
and red quake. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Jesus was saying this. Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Why was Jesus lifted up? To crucify the flesh. That's what he did Amen. on that cross. Okay. Mr. Gray. When Thawa went fast, Mr. Lee, and if sure. you want us to study Genesis 3? Yes. And uh, and whosoever believeth in him, in Christ, should not perish, but have everlasting life. The point being is, when Jesus was on the cross, he was crucifying the flesh. Mm -hmm. And so we likewise have to follow him, picking up our cross daily, walking this wilderness journey without murmuring, and picking up our cross daily. You said follow him. We were pick I don't see anybody walking around with a cross. But what he's saying is, it's like baptism. You're putting the old man under, keeping them suppressed under water. And then coming out of that water, being renewed in our minds through knowledge, what we're supposed to do, follow Christ. Wow. And lastly, and this is life eternal, what is life eternal? That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast said. That's what we got to believe, and nobody else. Mr. Gray. And tweet, Mr. Lee, what is the last word that people must understand? That God is a God of truth. You can put your trust in him because he can't lie and believe Everything that he says, he says, the gifts and promises of God are irrevocable. You, 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 everything that he says, you have to believe. And if a person, I said it before and briefly is this, um, well, the earth um, is going to be destroyed and uh, because of the ice age and the sun is going to burn out. That's a lie. According to the word of God, which God said, the world abide it forever. And uh, how is God, how is Abraham going to inherit the land as everlasting possession if the earth is burned up? And that's what God promised Abraham. In fact, in Romans 4.13, God said Abraham was going to inherit the world. Romans, look it up. Romans 4.13. So we know that's a, that's all kinds of scriptures. That can confute uh, what individuals are saying, because they're they're conjuring up things that they heard other people say, and most people don't search out the scriptures. And even even though they know that what they're listening to, something doesn't sound right. Yep, yep. So once again, Mr. Lee, what a wonderful broadcast! I wish we could stay on longer. But yeah, your Mr. final word, Mr. Lee. Final word is, before I give you the final word, just a passage, read Psalms 37. And if you believe God, <laughs> you, there's no way you can believe anything else outside of Psalms 37. Read Psalms 37 and see what the, what the theme in that chapter is. See what it's saying. Study. And once again, Thank Mr. Lee. God willing, we'll see you next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Good. Standard Time, right here on the One Source Network. God Good. bless you, Mr. Lee. He, he bless has. you, Mr. Lee. Yeah, he has, and I'm looking forward to next week, God willing. <laughs>